Good morning, church. It is Thursday morning. Take your Bibles and go to John chapter number 18. And we see that Jesus has been in the garden. He has prayed with his disciples, and now it's time for his arrest. Now, what's important to note out of this uh, passage is how meticulously God planned out Jesus' life. It's amazing that if we just understand this, that God has everything mapped out in our lives and we don't have to worry about anything. Everything's going to transpire just exactly the way God says it's going to happen. We need to just to relax and, and to trust God and to follow His perfect will. And if God had that kind of plan for His Son, Jesus' his life, certainly He has that kind of plan for our lives. Our, our lives are mapped out. And sometimes that means uh, that we have to suffer things we don't want to suffer. We have to go through trials and tribulations, troubles, difficulties. That really, we, we don't want to have to do that. And yet, for our Father's glory and for our good, uh, for a purpose, we have to do those things. So it's time for Jesus to face the, the cross, which means also he's going to be denied, he's going to be betrayed, there's going to be things that are going to happen, uh, and Jesus is going to just take it, if you will, like a man. He's going to accept it and say, hey, this is my Father's will. Leave everything in his hand. Well, in chapter 18, verse 1, it says, when Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples over the brook Kid Kidron, where there was a garden which he and his disciples entered. And Judas, who betrayed him, also went to that place. For Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Judas, having received a detachment of troops and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, came there with lanterns, torches, and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that would come upon him. Jesus knew all that was about to happen. He knew that this was the Father's will. He went forward and said, Whom are you seeking? So remember this detachment of troops. And sometimes we, we think that that detachment would be uh, even upwards to 500, maybe even more soldiers. Now, maybe it wasn't that many on this occasion, but they had a, a goodly number of troops there. And Jesus walks up to them to accept his fate because he knew this was the Father's will. And he says, and he asked them, who are you looking for? And then here's what they said in verse 5. They answered him, we're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus said unto them, I am he. Now, if you've got your Bible out before you, you'll note that the he there is in italics. He just simply said, I am. Now, it's added in our English uh, translation to help us to know uh, that he's talking about himself. I am he. I am. Now, notice what happens. And Judas, who had betrayed him, uh, also stood with them. Now, when he said to them, I am he, or I am, they drew back and fell to the ground. Notice the kind of power that that name has. That, again, is the name of God. We've been looking at the seven I am statements of Jesus. I am the gate. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the way, truth, life, and so forth. But this is, again, showing us the power in the name of God. That when Jesus said, I am, these hardened soldiers, these men with weapons who were ready to draw them, or probably had them drawn, and ready to go to battle, they backed up. And some of them, it says, fell to the ground. That the name of Jesus... It reminds me of uh, the coming a time when, as Paul put it, one of these days when the name of, at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess, those in heaven, those on the earth, and those under the earth, that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so again, just note that everything's transpiring just exactly like God said it would. But Peter and some of them did not want to, see, did not want to accept that fate. So he asked them again, who are you seeking? They said, well, we're seeking Jesus of Nazareth. He told you, he said, I told you, I am he. Therefore, if you seek me, then let these others go, that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke of those whom you gave me. I did not lose one. Okay. 
Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. Now that servant's name was Malchus. So Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword into the sheaf. Shall I not drink the cup which my father has given me? So what Jesus is saying here is, hey, listen, listen. If, if I'm the one you're seeking, then let these go. Because he was protecting his own. And they did, get, they did dismiss them. It may have been their intent before this to arrest them, and Jesus may have, may have known that. And he said, let these go, and they knew, they knew they'd better let them go. Something strange had just happened. They all fell down at the name of Jesus or at uh, his statement, I am. And uh, Peter, fighting against uh, the inevitable, kicking against the prick, if you will, uh, wanting to change things to suit him because he did not want Jesus to die. And so he takes out a sword and he goes to fighting. And at least we've got to admire his bravery at this moment. There's just a few of them and a whole lot of soldiers. And Peter's thinking, hey, man, we can win this thing. Jesus is on our side. But Jesus wasn't on his side at this moment. He had stepped outside the Father's will. So listen, whatever comes our way, we don't have to accept everything bad. I'm not saying that. But if we know that God's will is being done and we're doing exactly what we uh, are supposed to be doing, we've prayed about everything and difficult things are coming, then we just need to simply accept the fact that God is working out His will in our lives. So today, go forward knowing this. Every step you take, the Lord already knows where you're going. He's right there with you. He's going to protect you. Even when we have to go through the valley of the shadow of death, He'll be right there with us to protect us and watch over us. Nothing's going to befall us except that which is according to His perfect will. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank You that You are always with us. You never leave us or forsake us. We're always able to to call upon your name and to know that your name has power and that we can depend upon you for our deliverance, either from this world or, Father, into the kingdom, into the kingdom that is to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.